Your customer's TPMS warning light is on, yet you are unable to detect the presence of any sensors in any of the wheels. Well, you may have to take an indirect approach to the problem. Find out what I mean in today's Mighty Minute. The earliest TPMS systems were indirect systems. That is, they were unable to actually measure the air pressure in each individual tire. Instead, they made use of the vehicle's ABS and traction control systems, using the wheel speed information and other data to compare the tires to one another and illuminating the warning light when an underinflated tire was suspected. Now these early indirect TPMS systems did suffer a few limitations. They were able to detect if a single tire became underinflated, but they were unable to tell the driver which tire was at fault. Additionally, false alarms caused by road or weather conditions were not uncommon. The one advantage that indirect TPMS does offer is cost, both to the manufacturer and to the consumer. It's easy to add indirect TPMS to any vehicle that has ABS and traction control systems, and it eliminates a lot of maintenance and repair costs by eliminating the need for dedicated sensors, receivers, and control modules. Today, indirect systems are once again gaining popularity and can be found on a number of Asian and European models, like those offered by Honda, Toyota, Mazda, Volkswagen Audi, BMW, and Mercedes. And with the advances in wheel speed centric technology, indirect TPMS systems are more accurate than ever, even providing for the identification of the offending tire when one is determined to be low, just like their direct TPMS counterparts. One key concept to keep in mind when you're dealing with indirect TPMS systems. The vehicle has no idea what normal is unless we teach it, and every vehicle has some procedure to place it into what's called learn mode so they can indeed learn what normal is supposed to be. Keep in mind too that there are some service procedures that you do every day in your shop that are also going to affect those parameters requiring you to place that vehicle back into learn mode and teaching it all over again. Some examples of services that would require a relearn or reset as defined by most OEMs include changing tire pressure performing a tire rotation, or tire replacement. While indirect TPMS systems do work similarly, there is no one common reset or relearn procedure. The first step is to ensure that all the tires are inflated to their proper cold tire inflation specification. The next step is typically to place the vehicle into learn mode. On early TPMS designs, this might be something as simple as pressing a dedicated reset switch, while most newer models like this 2019 Jetta require accessing the menu through the vehicle information system on the instrument panel. Now, while many vehicles will allow you to complete the reset in the shop, there are still some vehicles that require you to drive the vehicle for a minimum distance at a minimum speed in order to complete the relearn process. Make sure you look that up in your service information system. Remember, TPMS is a mandated safety system. It's up to you to make sure that the vehicle leaves with the system working properly. Thanks for watching.